Hey guys, my name is Austin and welcome to the OutJeeping YouTube channel. Now today we're going to be continuing to work on this 1978 Jeep J10 truck. If you guys saw last time we installed a master cylinder for the brakes, but today we're going to continue on replacing more brake components. Uh, today we're going to focus on the front disc brakes. I got some new calipers and some new lines, so hopefully we can get the front brakes dialed in on this Jeep and stopping a little bit better. So let's get started. Alright guys, before this video gets started, I do want to mention today's video sponsor and that is Loyo LED Lighting. Now Loyo LED Lighting makes a bunch of LED bulbs for replacing headlights all the way to fog lamps in a variety of vehicles. Now today they sent us some LED fog lights for my 2007 Dodge Ram. And as you can see with these LED fog lights, they're a lot more appealing than the factory ones. And with these ones, it's actually nice because they got a daytime running light option. Now if you guys want to get some Loyo LED lights for your vehicle, I got a link in the description below where you guys can check it out. But as for right now, let's get back to the video. All right, so here are all the parts that we're going to be replacing on the Jeep today. Um, so we got some new remanufactured calipers I got off of Rock Auto. If you guys saw from the master cylinder replacement video, I tried bleeding the brakes and one of the bleeder screws on the passenger side actually snapped off. So it's better just to get um, some new calipers and instead of just getting one, I got both of them right here so that way they're both going to be rebuilt. Now on top of that, I also got some new ceramic brake pads we're going to be throwing in there. And I also held off on buying some rotors for now. I'm going to be uh, doing that in a later video because I want to uh, rebuild the wheel bearings in there, repack them full of grease and put new seals and then do the rotors while I'm all in there at the same time. Right now, I just really want to get the brakes working on this thing so I can cruise around in it. So on top of that, I got some new soft lines for either side on the front. And uh, I also got some new hard line right here. This is 3 16 copper nickel brake line. And then they came with a bunch of uh, various fittings that we're gonna be doing. I decided I'm gonna be replacing all the brake line that way I don't have any future issues um, with possible rust holes or stuff like that. Something that's kind of interesting is when I did the uh, rear brake line on my Red Jeep Cherokee XJ over the winter, I used copper nickel brake line as well, but I used it from a different brand. And uh, what I've noticed uh, with weathering so far, it's actually starting to corrode and it's actually a different color uh, brake line than this. You can actually see this is kind of silvery because it has that nickel in there. And I think the uh, brand that I got before was actually, must have just been pure copper because it's starting to corrode a little bit and starting to get green, kind of like how copper does when it's weathered. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description below and we can find this. This seems to be good quality and hopefully it should last with the elements. So now that we know all the parts that we're going to be installing today, let's get over to the Jeep and start taking off all the parts. Um, since we're just working on the front brakes today and it's on a separate circuit with the rear brakes, um, we can get away with bleeding the front and not have to worry about doing the rear. The rear is coming, but I'm currently looking for backing plates right now because they look pretty rusty. I don't want to put some new brake stuff on a rusty backing plate. So I'm going to jack up the front end of the vehicle so that way we can do both sides at the same time. I'm going to put the calipers on, put the pads on, and uh, with the soft lines, and then I'm going to uh, start working on the hard line last and then get that all plumbed in. Alright, so looking in the driver's side wheel well here, as you saw from last time, this is our new bleeder screw that we replaced before. But now we're going to start off by removing the old caliper and getting the new one on there and then working our way back and uh, putting the new soft line on and everything like that. Um, I went ahead right away and took some PB Blaster over here to where this hard line connects to the soft line. There's actually a nut that retains a soft line into this bracket so that way it's not jiggling around. And it looked pretty crusty so I just sprayed it with some PB Blaster. In the meantime, we're going to work on taking off the caliper and they got two bolts holding it on right back here and that's actually going to be an internal hex 3 8 and inside there it's kind of filled up with some dirt and rust so I'm just going to uh, clean it out a little bit so that way we can get the uh, internal hex in there and then we should be able to get it out nicely. All 
All right, so that seems kind of tight. Um, I noticed with these bolts are actually threaded into the caliper bracket, which is this piece right here. And they're actually threaded in the portion right on here. And you can kind of see the threads uh, exposed a little bit here between the brake pad. So I'm just gonna squirt some PB Blaster in there. And then if we need to, we might add some heat. So that way you can get these guys out. Let's see if I can get a breaker bar on this. There we go. You can go ahead and pull this bolt out of here. There we go. All right, now let's see if this caliper wants to come off. Thing we're replacing the line. All right, so I referenced the old brake pads to the new ones and make sure I got the ones for the correct side. So right here, this is our pad that goes against the piston. And as you can see, so there's new brackets right here that come with the brake pads and caliper. Um, so we're gonna take the pad that goes against the piston and we're gonna slip this on here. It's gonna basically clamp onto the side of the pad and then that way it's going to attach to the caliper. So I'm gonna hook it like that and then just push it in. Just like so. Remove the new slide pins. Set it in and push it so it clips inside that piston. And now with our outer brake pad, this guy just basically slides right into here. It has a couple tabs on the bottom and one up there. So now I'll take our new caliper. And you're gonna have to hold this outer one because it likes to pop out. Make sure it's lined up. I have the pins out right now, and then we're gonna slide this over the rotor. Make sure you have the correct side with the bleeder screw that's located on the top. And then on these calipers, they have these little spacers that are in here. These guys are pre-lubed up. Make sure uh, you don't lose them when you're installing this. And then once you get a little bit lined up, you can take your new pins. These guys are already greased up right out of the box. Kind of line it up to uh, where it's going to go onto the caliper bracket. Now if this pin isn't going in all the way, it's actually running into the uh, brake pad. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. Pull it up. There we go. And then we just got to line it up over here on the other side. You don't want to hammer too much because the threads are going to start contacting the caliper bracket. And then we can start tightening this new caliper up. All right, so now we're going to install our new soft line over here. For the left and right side, they're both universal, both the same part. Um, so we can't really mix these up. I went and removed the new banjo bolt that's in the back of the caliper here. And as you can see, we got two copper crush washers. So we're gonna take one of them off. And that the way this is orientated, it's gonna be straight up and there's little tabs that lock in here on the caliper. So I'm gonna take our bolt with one crush washer on each side of the hose. You wanna make sure that your soft line is kind of bent away from the caliper. Just got that into position and then I'll start threading this into place. And this is gonna be a 7 16 banjo bolt. Right, right there is good. All right, so moving to the old soft line and hard line connection over here on the frame. Um, there's actually a retaining nut that's holding it to this little bracket right here. This little bracket's not supposed to be bent, but for some reason on this side it's bent. So once we get this off, we're gonna pound that straight. Um, but unfortunately, this is bigger than seven eighths, um, which is the biggest wrench I have. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut the old hard line since we're actually replacing that. And then I can fit a socket on here and hopefully break this free from this bracket. So I'm gonna cut this and hopefully not a whole lot of fluid leaks out. There we go. All right, so it looks like this guy's a 15 16. I think the 
brackets bending more than anything. Well, just to make this a little bit easier, since this is disconnected, I'm gonna take out these two bolts on the frame, and then we'll do this in an area we got more room, and that way I can straighten out that bracket a lot better. I think it's impact time. Oop. That's what I didn't want to happen. Ah. Oh well. We can always drill and tap some new holes. Well, that was not a success at all. I actually took a uh, map torch and heated that up quite a bit and uh, it's still pretty hot, but I started uh, taking an impact to it and yeah, it's not wanting to come off at all. So I think what I'm gonna do is just get a new nut for that, go to the hardware store tomorrow and just make a new bracket. It's pretty straightforward. Basically just some uh, eighth inch stock. All right, so update over here on the driver's side. Um, I wasn't able to get that nut off on the old brake line. It just wasn't coming off even with a half inch impact, just started stripping because it was so rust welded on there. So I scrapped that idea and instead I just got some new eighth inch plate and welded it over here onto the frame um, and just made a new bracket. I set the hole about an inch lower since I do plan on lifting this Jeep a little bit. It's going to help with the brake line so that way I don't have to replace these again in the future to get extended brake lines. So as you can see I got everything all welded up on here. It actually turned out pretty good with flux core wire. Um, I used it with my new Lincoln 140 welder. The paint's not 100% cured right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and attach our hard brake line over here to our bracket. So since I wasn't able to reuse my nut from the old brake line, I went and got some new nuts. This is actually a 5 8 UNF, which is a fine thread, so it's a little bit harder to find. I had to go to two stores to be able to find it. Um, I got that in a washer, so let's put this on here and we'll bolt this up. So I just got a washer, I'm gonna slip that onto the back. And then I got our nut, which is actually a nylon lock nut. And then the nut on the back is gonna be a 15 16 and up here I'm just gonna hold it with a three quarter wrench. All right, so now we're over here on the passenger side front and we're basically gonna do the same thing as the other side. This is the side that really needs replacing since as you saw from the last video, the bleeder screw over here on top of the caliper actually snapped off so we weren't able to bleed this after we put that master cylinder in. So same procedure as before. I'm gonna start by taking off the caliper. They got two uh, 3 8 internal hex bolts that hold this onto the caliper bracket. So we're gonna zip those off and then start taking off the pads as well as all the hard lines and soft lines. I'm just gonna clean out the internal hex back here since it is a little bit crusty and there's some dirt and crap in there. That way I don't risk stripping these out. And there's one bolt. Pads aren't terrible, but we got new ones, so we'll definitely throw some new ones on there. Since I'm replacing all that anyway, it's fine if I leave that hanging for now. All right, so now we got our new caliper right here. Make sure you have the bleeder screw. Uh, when you install it, make sure it's facing up. You don't want to flip them around, otherwise you won't be able to bleed your brakes. So now we're going to put the uh, pads in right now. Now on the pad that goes towards the piston, we got this little bracket we got to install on here first. All right, now we're gonna take our new caliper, kind of hold the pads a little bit because they like to pop out of place, and we'll fit it over the rotor. Then we got our new hardware. I'm just gonna put a little bit more grease on here, some silicone grease, and then feed it through the back. Then you might have to tweak the brake pads while it's in here to kind of help guide that pin so it goes into the correct position. Now we can proceed to tighten this down. Alright, so that caliper is 100% on there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take our soft line, 
hook it up to the banjo bolt on the back of the caliper here and then we'll connect it over here see if we have to remake this bracket um, I might just smash it to the other side because that turned out actually pretty well um, if those bolts snap over there alright so we got our brake line we got our banjo bolt we're gonna put one crush washer over here on one side and then we'll take our other copper washer put it on the other side and then thread it into the back of the caliper make sure it's orientated correctly you can use the uh, old caliper for reference and then we can tighten this up with a 7 16 socket all right let's see if these two bolts come off from in the frame um, this is a, a boxed in frame in this front section over here so you can't really get any heat or any penetrating fluid on it because um, it's just threaded into one side of the frame um, and there's not really any access holes to be able to access it from the back side so we're just got to hope for the best oh not too bad that wasn't too bad at all so now the next challenge is getting this retaining nut on the back of this plate here off but since I already cut out a piece for this side to weld on, it's just going to be a lot easier. I don't have to mess with this. Um, it does look a little bit cleaner than the other side, but I'm just going to clean up the frame over here and weld on a new piece of metal, paint it up, and then drill a hole. And then I got some new hardware to retain the uh, soft brake line to that bracket, and then we'll make some hard brake line all the way over to the proportioning valve, and then we can bleed the brakes, and we should be pretty much done with the front. I'm going to leave all this stuff hooked up right now, so that way the uh, brake fluid doesn't just all leak out of the system because uh, when I hooked up the uh, hard brake line on the other side it was just pouring out so so I'll leave that hooked up till I get the uh, line all the way made up to the proportion valve all right so it's the next day now yesterday I finished up welding on this bracket over here and painted it all up I didn't bother filming it because it was all cramped in here and it'd be kind of hard to film anyway um, so right now we're going to do the same thing as we did to the other side bolt this onto the bracket and then I'm going to start building the hard line that goes all the way over to the other side frame rail where the proportioning valve is I probably won't film during that because once again it's pretty cramped and it's kind of a pain in the butt going uh, up to the frame rail underneath the radiator and down the other side frame rail to get to that proportioning valve but I'll show you the new line once it's all installed but as for now let's take our new line fit it through our hole here and I did drill this hole out to 5 8 which is what you're going to need for this brake line. And before I put that in, I'm just going to put a little bit of anti-seize on here in case I have to take this off in the future. Then we got our washer, and then, then we got a washer, and then a nut for the back side. One thing I'll mention when you're tightening this soft line up, you want to make sure that it's not twisted when it's finally tightened down. You want to make sure it's nice and relaxed so that way um, as your suspension droops and compresses and as you're steering the wheels that way it doesn't bind the hose even more. So you want it nice and relaxed in the position that you tighten it down. So now I'll create the uh, hard line. I'm going to start off on the back side of here and go all the way to the proportioning valve. That way I don't have to deal with the fluid um, coming through the new line if I tried hooking up over here. Alright, so I got the hard line all hooked up for the passenger front side over here. As you can see, it's hooked up to the soft line that we just attached earlier. And the way that they have this routed, it goes up over the motor mount on the passenger side frame rail. And then it comes down to the lower core support underneath the radiator. They did have some other style clamps on here, but I just replaced them with some new rubber ones. So they got one there and one over here. And then it keeps going all the way down to the driver's side frame rail, all the way to the proportioning valve way back there. I may still add another clamp or so to the frame over here so that way this is not just jiggling around. They didn't have any other uh, factory mounts for this, it was just kind of hanging out there. Um, so I might add something later since there is no protective coil going around this brake line. But now that we got it all hooked up, I'm going to go ahead and start bleeding this passenger side over here just like how we did the driver's front. I'm probably going to start off with gravity bleeding since it is coming out of the uh, line pretty good and then we'll pump it through a few times and then we'll get the side all done. Alright so after that passenger side brake is all bled we're pretty much done here for today. For the time being I put a vice grip on the rear soft line so that way it would hold pressure in the rear. 
um, since they're just sleeking out the wheel cylinders and the brake pedal feels a lot firmer. I also took this for a ride a little bit earlier and it definitely stops a lot better. Um, I was filming this video over the last couple weeks trying to find time here and there and I'm just going to call it for today. But make sure you guys stay tuned because we got a lot more videos coming in the near future on the J10. We got more cooling system stuff that we got to replace here on the engine as well as an entire lift kit that we're going to be throwing on this. If you guys want to help support the channel, I got some outjeeping decals that you guys can purchase. I got them for the J10 as well as some XJ decals. I got a link in the description to my outjeeping Etsy store where you can go over and purchase to help support the channel. But if you guys like this video and found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the Outjeeping YouTube channel to help keep these videos coming. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below and I'll be happy to answer. So until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.